705. All right. 705. Today is uh, the Equity Committee meeting, Wednesday, December 9th, 9th 2020. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I want to first start out this meeting this evening and to say that let's take a moment of silence for the ones that we lost due to COVID-19. All right, thank you. All right, so I want to start out by saying that, you know, we're going to start off these committee meetings. Um, going forward, we're going to start rotating the minutes. Uh, we're going to have different people take minutes of our meetings going forward. And I think that's the right thing to do to give everybody an opportunity to take notes for us for all of our meetings. I think it's the right thing to do, although I take pretty bad notes, but I'll practice. <laughs> Um, so we're going to start out like that with that and um, let's start out with our first agenda item this evening. First and foremost, I just want to say our November committee meetings is on the website right now. And if you had the opportunity, you can please get the opportunity to review so you can know what we're up to and you know, everything's on there to see what is exactly going on with our committee. It's up there for everybody to view. The other thing I wanted to talk about tonight is the community uh, equity committee description. This is something we've been working on for a while. And tonight I wanted us to review some of the items on there so that the public knows exactly what our description of our committee is all about. I'm gonna share my screen now. One second. Darrell, do we need to make a motion to pass the November committee meeting minutes? I asked Jeremy about that. He said well, Harriet, what do you, should we do a motion for that? It's a good idea. This way everything's on record. Okay, one second. Do you want to make the motion, Darrell, and somebody else sign it, uh, second it? Yes, I'd like, like to mm -hmm. make a motion to pass uh, last month's committee meetings, uh, committee okay. minutes. Okay. I second it. Thank you, Edith. All in favor? All right. Any abstentions? Any objection? And any objections? Okay, so All right, it's unanimous. motion passes. It's unanimous. Right. Motion passes unanimous. All right. Perfect. All right, so the next uh, agenda I want to focus on is our. Uh, some of the things we've been discussing over the last few weeks, uh, just to, let me share my screen. One second. All right, everybody can see my screen? Yep. All right, perfect. I'm looking at the wrong man. There we go. <laughs> Uh, right. So, the description of the equity committee um, the strives to advocate for dignity, dignity and inclusivity, demographic and identity based disparities, and improving equitable outcomes in the community. The responsibility of the equity committee will focus on identifying and mitigating discrimination or harassment on the basis of race, color, national origin ethnicity, sexual identity, gender, and religion, as well as its effects across our, across our district. The committee will also focus on raising awareness of implicit bias. The equity committee will make recommendations to the board on concerns related to racial, color, national origin, religious, and gender equity affecting the community. The committee will foster a commitment to equity, social and environmental justice, diversity and inclusion, the ability to work collaboratively with people of diverse perspectives and experiences, connections with local historically marginalized communities, and the ability to represent the geographic and demographic diversity of the district. The equity committee will be responsible for delivering and maintaining a periodic assessment of budget parity 
equality and equity of the board, bylaw and website review, community board 11 communications. As far as budget parity, it will ensure that the community board budget requests our board puts forward are balanced, seeking to establish the equitable distribution of funds. As far as the equality and equity of the board, the uh, com committee in will ensure that the members of the board accurately and equitably represent the demographics of our district to the extent that the board is able to recruit and engage such individuals. Bylaw and website review. Um, the committee will ensure that the language in the board's bylaws and the website does not inadvertently include language which may be perceived as socially offensive or inappropriate in the context of race, color, national origin, religion, or gender. Community communications. Um, the committee will review um, the board's identity based That's it. Do you see me now? Yes. You see me? That's good. This is what we came up with. For any for now, I want to actually open the floor to have any discussions. Anybody have any other further suggestions on if we should make any further changes to this? Um, Lisa, how did it sound to you? Can Lisa hear me? Tell Lisa to un Lisa unmute yourself. Sorry, I'm trying to go back and forth between screens to pull it up. Um, no because problem. we lost, yeah, uh, we lost it. Like we lost your screen, Darrell. So like halfway through what she was reading, so I'm trying to pull it back up. Um, the part, the first part that you read wasn't in the document. You said the equity committee strives to something, something that wasn't in the document. That officially part of the description, or was that something that you just added in edit? Yeah, we added those. Hello. Yep. All right. Yeah. So we did add that that part in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To. And we wanted to make all the language inclusive, and that way it touches all aspects of you know equity, you know improvements and stuff like that. So. That was the whole idea behind it. We wanted to be very careful about how we say it and what we're actually saying, if that makes sense. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, the only thing I would notice, too, the other thing I noticed too, is that like there's a difference in the in the paragraph the first time that like it's broken down race, color, national origin, ethnicity, sexual identity, gender, and religion. And yeah, then it changes, mm -hmm. and then it changes to racial, color, national origin, religious, and gender equity. At the end of that second paragraph, and then it changes, and we lost it. Um, anyway, then it changes. So, uh, so I just think that like, because it's a long list of things, we should probably list everything once and then maybe figure out a way to just consistently refer back to it, unless there's a season that we're changing. <laughs> the community board means we're going to all aspects of ensuring that the community the committee is equitable community board is equitable so that was the whole idea like you know no, no no i get that what i'm just saying is that like the 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 categories change depending the categories on, the, on the sentence it's just that so like the context it, context of the sentence it went from race to racial but um okay yeah the equity committee will i did pause at that sentence because i'm not sure if it's grammatically correct but 
the equity committee yeah. will make recommendations to the board on concerns related to racial color. Yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, it no, because like the second, the last sentence of that second paragraph doesn't include sexual identity. Oh, it, it doesn't? doesn't? Include okay, so then we might have no. by accident omitted it. So the and then we, similarly, yeah, and then similarly, similarly at the end, I think it's missing a couple of things too. So that's all I was saying. Like it just, so that's unless there was a reason then. So then we out, just probably just, missed it because we, okay. I, we were trying to keep it consistent throughout. Yep. So whatever was put in the beginning was supposed to follow in every other aspect. So we'll make sure to include uh, all those. Okay. So that's, yeah. yeah, that was, yeah. Good catch. Uh, yeah, no, that was oh, I it. See what, uh, and, uh, Lisa, I see what you're saying. I'm no, so sorry. That's okay. I, I see what you're Yeah, no, I'm Thank definitely you. not advocating for leaving any group out. I just want to make sure that it's consistent unless there was a specific reason because that wasn't part of the previous meeting um, unless there was a specific reason that it was changed but um but i get it like when you're editing things sometimes uh things get left out so other okay. than that i think it's great perfect so we make those changes uh you know those changes uh edit you think it'll be enough for still the first to vote on to finalize it even though we have to make those type of edits uh I you mean, can make I, you can make a motion to uh accept it with the with the uh Changes. With the amendments. Yeah, with the yeah. amendments. Yeah. So. That's, yeah, that Lisa proposed, yeah. Then once it's done, uh, Durrell, send it to the rest of the committee. So motion with amendments. Yep. All right. A second? Yeah, I second it. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, All right yeah. so anybody against? Any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Christian, good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little late. It's okay. I'm in I'm in a very forgiving mood and the 2020 is almost over, so I'm kind of happy. <laughs> I'm right. lucky then. I lucked out. <laughs> All right, so the next uh, agenda item, uh, being that we got that done, we're gonna talk about current inequities. Um, all of us, we've been discussing some of the things that we can focus on and tangible items uh, that we can definitely look at to ensure that you know we're doing what we, 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 can, we can do. And one of the things was some of the ADA issues. I know this is a very complex topic and it's hard to get a lot of things done in the midst of uh, some of these issues uh, from some of the stories that I heard. Uh, however, um, just recently, the, our committee was able to look into certain situations in, in regarding the you know, transportation, the trains and stuff like that, the subways. I, we spoke to Jeremy extensively about it and he was actually able to add a link and research some of the, some of the, the, you know, the problems in the, in the community, uh, the community in regarding subway stations and ADA issues. And overall, he pretty much found out, outlined all the train stations that exist within Community Board 11 and added it as a link to uh, the website, which I thought was good, you know? Uh, we wanna continue to improve the website. And he did us a, you know, he really looked into it. He had some of his interns put it together. Uh, I think Harry, you were working on it with him as well, right? Oh, well, basically, the intern did that. Okay. <laughs> Be aware. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself unless somebody talks to me, so that there's no feedback in the background. No worries. All right. So we we were able to do that. So I'm very happy and excited about that. Um, I also know that uh, one of our members, Christian, uh, you actually gave us a link about, and I called it a, I called it like a, I listed it as a tool. For something that uh, we can continue to improve in some in, in our community uh, regarding uh, what's always do not have ADA, com you know, like elevators and escalators and stuff like that for you know several ADA issues within the community. Uh, I want you to elaborate a little bit on that for us and tell us walk us through. Some yeah, of the awesome. Let me pull it up. 
Um, it's, it's not overly complex. I think this is a living document. This is something we can keep adding to. I've got a few tabs on this and I, I added all of the- Do you the, want me to pull uh, it up? Yeah, you could pull it up. I, I added all of the members to the committee um, to yeah, this we have uh, mm -hmm. Google Sheet. Um, right, let me pull this up. I'll pull it up and then I can right. jump in and talk about some of the things. I got the email. There we go. Okay. So, so we call it, I called it as, I called it a CB11 accessibility tool uh, because, you know, pretty much it's something that we're going to consistently improve on, you know, and, you know, force some of these recommendations uh, the best way we can and, and hopefully get some local politicians involved, um, local uh, officials involved, and just ask them the questions like, what's actually going on with these things? Uh, I don't know uh, any any because uh, Christian, you you rub a lot of shows, a lot of people, and what are some of the, some of our members telling us out there regarding the ADA issues? Well, I mean, you know, the biggest thing the biggest thing that I feel like I tend to hear is that you know our community is is uh, is a community that you know seems to have a larger uh, uh, older or age population and yet our infrastructure really is not um, prepared to support that and that's something that's undoubtedly going to continue to rise as people you know the baby boomers continue to age etc um, and so you know we have an ADA issue in this community um, one two three four five of the five train stations in our community only one of them is, I mean, I guess you could count a sixth station, East 180th Street, um, which is ADA compliant. But of the five stations in our community Christian, board's Christian, purview, that one's not in our area. Oh, great. Okay, that's outside of our borders. So in, in our community board, we only have one ADA compliant station at Pelham Parkway and White Plains Road. And um, even that one, the escalators are prone to breaking down regularly. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think, it's, uh, I think it's really important for us to prioritize this issue for our community. Um, you know, Allerton, Morris Park Station, Pelham Parkway Station, and Bronx Park East, none, these all lack both an elevator and an escalator. Um, I think that's a uh, that's a pretty glaring oversight on the mobility of our community. Um, more importantly, you know, pa the Pelham Parkway White Plains Road Station. You know, sure that sits between uh, Bronx Park East and Allerton. So you could say, um, you know, someone who needed an elevator or an escalator could access that at those two other stations. But again, as I said, uh, uh, sorry, at Pelham Parkway, but as I said, you know, that station is not very reliable. Um, additionally, the, Mar uh, the Pelham Parkway station, um, which is the one over on Esplanade um, in the north side of the parkway, this station had been originally uh, given a grant to put in an elevator and that seemingly disappeared. Um, so overall, I think, you know, our train stations pose a big ADA concern um, and, and, you know, play a big role in the accessibility of our community. Um, and then when you think about this aging population, you also have to think about the fact that we have major at intersections with crossing issues. And so I have a second tab on that, just outlining some of these big intersections. These intersections are, you know, 20 to 30 feet in width. Uh, without an island or a divider in the middle. Uh, but more importantly, you know, we're relying off of just your standard crosswalk infrastructure. Um, for these intersections that pose, a, pose such a threat to our community, you know, both for people crossing the street, especially elderly people, um, none of our crosswalks in our community have signals that um, take uh, the, um, the deaf community into uh, mind. And so these are, uh, these are nine intersections that I think could benefit from audio, uh, audio announcements at the crosswalks to ensure that our um, deaf, uh, uh, sorry, our blind constituents can still cross the street um, safely. Um, but I also think that perhaps these are items that we can also share with the transportation community. Um, 
committee uh, highways uh, train our interest a little more accessible. I included some sidewalks and I've been um, Pelham Parkway on the south side, the walkway that stretches between White Plains Road and East Chester Road. So about a mile, um, that mile stretch of sidewalk, um, some of it has no crosswalk, some of it has no um, no curb to even cross, um, and and most of it has poles uh, placed mid sidewalk. So if you're in a wheelchair um, and you're going down the sidewalk, you're essentially going to get stuck um, and won't be able to get around that pole. Um, so I think like these three sort of transportation and you know infrastructure focused um, pieces all highlight you know um, accessibility issues for our disabled community um, and our aging community I agree so so I want to open up this uh, the conversation so like uh, all of the members what do what do we think will be the best course of action and um, Christian especially in regarding to like how do we I guess, what I'm how do we make a recommendation to uh yeah i thought dot would be a, a one place to go for like um the sidewalks and the crosswalk the you know if we wanted to you know advocate for audio uh crosswalks for the audio impaired you know i think dot would be the one to go to there i think that makes sense though to go to the transportation committee um and guess, yeah and but then i guess make sure that they do kind of follow up on this right i mean the one well, thing I hope I that christian and i are both on the committee yeah <laughs> we're <laughs> both on the committee <laughs> okay i don't know i don't know we'll sure. anything about other committees <laughs> i mean yeah well, you're, for, you're formally both on it but do we recommend still to you guys and how do we do this well I mean, Lisa, I think, I think the best dis decision, right, is for us to like make a recommendation as the equity committee to the yeah. transpo committee and then yeah. the transpo committee picks up, picks it up, right? Yeah, I think, you know, we'll, we can talk about it at the meeting because we'll be there, but yeah. I think formally it should go from chairperson to chairperson, right, right. Harry? Yeah. I, I think that's. No, it should come should from, we, it, should, we, it should come from your committee to the chair the transportation committee. You can go to the chair and he can bring it up at the next transportation committee. But I think it might be a good idea if everybody on the committee knew about it, besides just going to the chair. Right. Yeah, so maybe you can email him and copy us. All right. Harry, do I need to do any motion for that or just just an email? You know you know what? It's always good to do a motion. All right. All right. I'd like to put a motion uh, of recommendation to the Transportation Committee about uh, to further investigate these ADA issues. I second. I, I, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Should we Sus add, oh. add more to it? Like, do we want to give it a week? Because Transpo isn't meeting this month either way. So do we want to give it a few weeks and try to add more? Or do you think, I mean, I definitely think we um, you know, there's a lot here to tackle. Okay, so this is that's a good question. So what we can do is uh let's continue to let's continue to dig a little bit and let's let's put it more on paper. And then we we can do a recommendation. I think we should do a recommendation after probably in January, because everybody's going to start meeting back up after the new year. Yeah, but we want to make sure that the Transportation Committee, I think, meets on the first Monday of the month, right, Christian? Yeah, I think that's right. So I don't want to miss, like, if we have to re-vote, and I don't know if we need to do this, but if we need to re-vote, on the different things that are added to the list and we wait until our next meeting then we're going to miss their next meeting 
that makes a lot of sense. All right. Um, okay. So we do it as is. We already put the motion on the table for it. So yes, it'll be a, rec uh, a recommendation. I have to write an email over to you guys uh, to further look into this and uh, see how we can go uh, appropriately in terms of recommending, recommending someone to look into this further, how we can improve that situation. But I mean, listen, it's, I'm, I'm sure the, the transportation committee will come up with other ideas and other to, to add to it. To, yeah. So at least like we're giving them like some kind of like framework and then uh, what we are considering and then they can always elaborate further. All right, so Stan, so motion passed and unanimously. We're going to send out an email over a letter of recommendation uh, to further look into this situation and where we can go from there. Sounds good? Yeah. All right, um, next agenda item that we're going to focus on is the gender wage gap. Uh, we actually had somebody that was supposed to come to our meeting and she was unable to make it. One second. I don't know if you guys remember from my full board meeting, um, there was a lady that came on from the gallery and she mentioned that there was some inequity, uh, pay inequity for women in the city. I'm sorry for the noise, that's my little son. Her name was Nicole uh, Totoro. I've been in contact, we've been in contact with Jeremy about this. Uh, it's about addressing, uh, we invited her to come on to address the gender wage gap in New York City. And unfortunately she could not make it to this meeting. Uh, but the scope of the problem, and I gave you guys the email, did anybody get a chance just to briefly review it? Yes. Yes. Yep. All right, so according to the email, um, you can see the statistics and uh, Mayor de Blasio in 2015 had a commission for gender uh, equity in uh, city council uh, that became a local law 67 in September 2016. And the, you know the story, the, the bill's been stuck in, in the city council and no one has an answer to when, you know, what we can, what, what's gonna happen to push that bill forward. Uh, so ultimately I wanted her to be on in our meeting so we can see whatever options we have to, I don't know, write a letter of recommendation, or, uh, you know, just utilize all our resources to further understand, you know, what this committee can, I guess, essentially do in regards to it. I'm gonna open the floor for discussion. Anybody wants to discuss any, su you know, suggestions? Well, I think for starters, we need to look up the proposed bill, which I'm assuming failed since it didn't pass. And it probably has to be reintroduced. So um, I think the first things first, we need to look at what that bill states. Um, I agree. Um, are we able to, as a community board, advocate for particular pieces of legislation? No. Like, we're not, right? Yes, there's some conflicts of interest, certain things we can't, we can't say, um, but we can, I believe we can inquire to see what's actually happening, you know? And okay. um, that's, that's exactly why I want the uh, young lady to come on to on, in our meeting so we could further, you know, look into this and, you know, what's actually going on. I think we need more information. Uh, so, yeah. I, you know, I wanted to bring this up because to me it's important, you know, a lot of people are risking their lives in the midst of COVID and frontline workers and not being paid the same, you know, I actually did a lot of research on, you know, pay inequity over the last couple of years in regards to this and it's a, it's a, it's a real thing. And um, so that's something I want to further look at. So she's not here. I want to take, we're going to uh, table the item, but I wanted to bring it up because I thought it was important and I heard her talk about it last meeting. I don't know if anybody caught it, but I, I heard her talk about it and I, I thought it was something interesting that we should definitely take on as the equity committee. So for now, we're going to table that item, uh, but I'm glad I was able to bring it up. Um, anybody want to say anything more about it? 
Um, I just want to say one other thing. Um, once we do find out more about it and we find out, um, you know, if the bill is going to be reintroduced, um, I don't know if it'll be, re I don't know when it, I didn't read all of the details. I don't know when it was initially introduced and, and when it was voted down, but if it does get reintroduced, it would be helpful to see the list of co-sponsors and if any of them are in, um, in our district. And, you know, although we can't, you know, even though we can't advocate for it, we can certainly ask um, as the equity committee, we, um, if there's a, we can ask the elected official to speak at our meeting about it to see, like, from the inside, like, what what's going on with it. Absolutely. Or maybe even if, even if even if they're not our elected official, they're just in the Bronx, like, you know. And nowadays, it doesn't even matter where they are because we're doing everything online anyway. They can always call into our meeting just to speak about it as for informational purposes to the whole board. Definitely. I think we should definitely reach out to someone. Uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe Joe and I can speak on it. I know Richie Torres is on his way to Congress, so I don't think he's thinking about this. Well, but, I'm thinking of like whoever, you know, I don't know. Who, the people who are co-sponsoring it, because they'll know like more about it. Um, it. And I don't know if Joe and I would be a co-sponsor, and if he is, that's great, but if not, I think it would be more important that the person that we get to speak is a, is an actual sponsor of the bill. And if they are also in our district, then obviously that's a bonus. Yeah, I'm looking at the sponsor name. Her name is Helen uh, Rosenthal. I don't, I don't believe she's, I don't know what, what district she serves in New York City. I, I'm actually pretty friendly with Helen and would be happy to ask her if she wants to come talk about it. That that would be highly uh that'd be grateful uh you know I would you know look forward to something like that hopefully next meeting we can set something up like that sure. if possible we could talk offline to plan it out definitely and I and this bill was uh introduced in 2019 so I don't think it's elapsed I think it's just sitting there so on someone's desk probably that's what it says here. Yeah, and if we and if we are able to get her to speak not not to our committee but to the entire board, Absolutely. I think that helps in our in our mission to to raise awareness, right? Yeah. Like we can't advocate for a bill, but like we're just raising the issue. We're 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 raising awareness, and then individual members, if they want to advocate on their own, obviously they're well in the rights to do that. But we're educating our members and we're educating the public, which I think is part of our mission. Yep, I, absolutely. We may not be able to lobby, but there's other ways to uh, still accomplish something in regards to this, I believe. All right. Um, pardon me. So uh, the next agenda, I'm so we're going to table that for now. We're going to look into that. Um, our next agenda item that I want to focus on is uh, district demographics. Um, a lot of Hello? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard a lot of chat. I'm sorry about that. All right. So I heard um, you, you guys saw the emails I sent you guys regarding uh, census tracts and the census, uh, uh, census uh, district maps for community board members. Uh, that wasn't by mistake. It wasn't to be intrusive or anything like that. Um, and I told you guys to keep it within the committee because the whole objective of that was to see how many of us are representing you know certain aspects of our community and a lot of us are covering majority if you look at the map majority of us are covered uh based on where we live is covering our community uh and that gives us more insight to you know how we can be more equitable how can we be more inclusive how can we get more members to represent our community board and their community so that's a part of our effort and um, I was able to get that done through Jeremy, you, you know, through some of the interns I looked into it. Unfortunately, we don't have so much information like we you uh, like we have right now because the census is not going to be readily available until 2020. Now I've, I saw some collateral that it's, it looks like they're wrapping up with it. Uh, you know, all the information collection, and now they're going to you know finalize it sometime next year. Hopefully, early next year. We have no idea, uh, but. 
some of the tools that I want to continue to use that you saw in the email, you saw some of the links that says New York City Planning Community Profiles. Yeah. This, is, this, I believe, is what is going to be our main tool to really understand what we're going to be doing uh, with the committee in terms of, you know, always trying to improve and make things better. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. All right. This thing, I can't even move out the way. Oh my God. All right. You guys can see my screen or no? No, right now, uh, we. I just see your um, your camera, like I see you. <laughs> Okay, I'm sharing right now, sorry. All right, here we go. So here we go, so you see that, right? Community district profiles. I think for our committee, this should be our ongoing uh, tool that we'll use. Right now, they only have up to 2010, but next year they're gonna have up, you know, 2020. And this is full details of, you know, things we can focus on, you know, based on demographics. Everything you, you need to know is on here. Um, and this can always help us add value to our community board website, you know? So these yeah. are things we're looking at constantly because we can always improve. I personally believe in not tooting our own horn for our community board website. We have one of the best websites out of all community boards that I've visit, visited. Look at all the stuff here. So this is an ongoing improvement that we're going to continue to work on. But this is our go-to uh, go -to tool that we're going to constantly review. I like it. Yeah, so that, that is our tool. You're always going to see that in our emails uh, with the links. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's so hard putting those emails together. I, <laughs> I had so many links, and I'm trying to, you know, trying to figure out tools that we can use to constantly improve our, you know, the situation. So that's what the census tracks was about and the map that I showed you in a, uh, privately in our email about where we all live. As you can see, all the dots, it doesn't tell us our address because we have to keep privacy, but it also shows where we're all representing. So we pretty much covered majority of our district, which is a good thing, you know, where people are involved. Any questions, any statements anybody want to say, add to that? Um. No, I, I agree with you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> next agenda item that I want to move forward on. Which, so census tracts, you can agree. We're going to continuously ongoing. You're going to be ongoing with that. Uh, the next thing I want to focus on is the outreach to schools update. Uh, Paula actually started working on that. She did a good job. She started a... Uh, a draft. It's Paul, you want me to pull up the draft or no? Yeah, if you could pull up pull up the draft, that would be great. And then I'll great. just um let me find your email. I got like a thousand emails. From I, you could also use the link that I sent you earlier in the chat box. Oh yes, that's correct. And it may require you to ask for uh Access. permission, but I I switched it to um like just anyone with the link can open it just to take a step out. All right. I actually see your email too. I can pull it that way as well. Okay. There's like a typo on the one I sent you in the email, but um, oh. if anything, I'll point it out and just, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> I, <laughs> you're too funny. And I, and I adjusted it like in the Google Doc version as well. So She's I'll just start like talking on it, like while you um, pull it up. <laughs> Basically, uh, with this community outreach uh, specifically focusing on like younger members in our community, uh, like the ages ranging from 16 to 24. Uh, we're trying to figure out like a way to get them like engaged and involved with what's going on uh, here at our like community board. Um, so we were thinking uh, like 
reaching out to schools, like maybe their administration, like departments and just uh, sending an email or like, like an email blast or something like that to them expressing like, hey, um, we're interested in reaching out to like your students, it, like even like professors or teachers who teach history or like some type of US government or government class, like maybe this is like something they can uh, create like maybe a lesson for, plan for. Uh, so basically, um, sorry, my brain is like all over the place. So basically I was just thinking we could create an email to reach out to schools and then what schools would we reach out to? Luckily, like on the Community Board 11 website page, um, there was a section in resources for a list of schools that are directly in our area. And I provided that link in the uh, Google Doc. So like it breaks down like, high schools elementary schools uh there's like a few colleges catholic schools so i was and it's like over over 30 35 schools that are like listed there so like we have like a big like area where we could like cast a net to see like what schools may respond and um maybe within like the email we send out like we could include like simple questions like for the students to like respond to the district you live in. Um, do you know who your elect your local officials are? Um, do you know the purpose of 311 and stuff like that? Kind of just to get like their kind of get them thinking like, hey, there there are ways like even though you're younger, um, like you could voice like your opinion and concerns within the community and you don't have to think like it doesn't matter because it's gonna fall on deaf ears. That's not the case. Um, if they like use tools like this and like reach out to us um so yeah i was saying like a way like they can communicate with us like again maybe we can consider like if we can get like a, a committee email or use like the cb11 staffs like we could create our own email but also have them like cc the um cb11 staff as well just so like everything like it's visual for all and um maybe even direct students to like us through that as well um and overall like the goal for this is not to directly ask students to join but to let like kind of just be a resource and kind of try to spark their interest without like forcing them because i know there's like a lot of kids you tell them to go left they're gonna go right so i want to see if there's like a way we can go about this where it's not too like we're not trying to force anybody we're just like hey just want to know just want to let you know and we're interested in like what you think and stuff like that and um i also feel like another goal of this is it could create like great networking opportunities for the student um it can make uh, board members who may be like in careers that they're also pursuing um they can get more they can have more of an idea of like who the local officials are, like local politicians in the area. Because I know when I was 16, um, I didn't I didn't have like a strong sense of like who was who represented me exactly. And like this can also connect them with like police departments, like since we have them, uh, the police department, like at our meetings and stuff, the students can see like the resources that they have and maybe that'll gateway them into getting involved with like their meetings. Um, and learn opportunities that are going on in the community. Yeah, and learn about like, at, learn about like opportunities that are going on in the community that they may have not known about. Cause like uh, attending like an education committee meeting or like looking at the notes, like you may see like, hey, the library is offering help with like filling out FAFSA and like they'll help you um, with like writing up a resume and stuff like that. And there's like information some people just don't know about because they don't really go like seeking for it. But if we kind of flag to them like, hey, we, we're a good resource that could get younger kids involved. And that's all I got. <laughs> that's great. I love it. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a wonderful No, thing. I really do. Yeah, yeah no, so that was amazing. Good my job. my next step with this would be to actually draft like what the email blast would look like. Um, and then like we can all like go over it and agree. And then from there, like between now and like the next meeting, I could come up with like the email addresses like I could find for the schools from looking at the website. Um, like the resource link that's provided in this and just just do like a general send out. 
and then just keep track of like who's responded back to us. And if we haven't heard back from certain schools, just make like a general phone call um, to see like, hey, this is just like an open resource. You wanna see if you can just include uh, like our little email thing in a, in a school digital newsletter, if they do something like that, just to kind of get the information out there. I think that's a great, a great idea. And like, like we said, a lot of kids are not even, they don't even know anything about civics anymore. Yeah. I mean, they don't know the three branches of government. They don't know that, you know, what an impeachment is. They don't know how elections work. So like, and just getting involved with their community and not really familiar with all the channels. Some people at Dells that I talk to don't even know what a community board is, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I mentioned it, like, what is that? So. I think yeah. it's a good thing, Paula, and we're going to continue to uh, add to it. I think this will be an ongoing topic until we get that going and establish that. So, yeah, between now and that and the next meeting, yeah, let's see what we can start to accomplish. My only concern is right now it's December, school is out. Um, I have a oh, younger yeah. brother. <laughs> yeah, I have a younger brother, and college is out. We, we were targeting, our scope is going to be wide on that. You, you say you're going to target some of the local high schools too, right? First? Yeah, high school. Because, yeah, there's high schools and colleges. Uh, let me, because I have that up right now. There's like three, one, two, three, three post-secondary degree granting schools, which is like Albert Einstein College of Medicine, um, another uh, graduate school of psychology and Mercy College. Like definitely re we could reach out to them to get people involved there. And then there's like uh, three high schools. And then the rest are. No, so we're gonna, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, there's Catholic we're gonna, high schools and regular high schools. So I sorry. think we're gonna, we're gonna limit our scope to be effective. I think we're gonna focus on maybe three of them. Mm -hmm. And then see how it works and continue to expand. Anybody has thoughts on that? Like you wanna just focus on three high, like schools in general? I was thinking that. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I'm fine with doing something like that. If that's the case, probably we would l focus our thing on like middle school and high school just to see like what kind of interaction we can get from them. And then also like the other, like the other older, older schools. There was another school I was trying to find it. I don't see it on this list, but that was like definitely one I would want to reach out to, but I don't. I might have, oh no, there was like uh, Pelham Academy of Academics and Community Engagement. That's definitely one I feel like we should like reach out to and try to get them involved because community engagement is like in their name, so. Absolutely, I, this is a brilliant idea and I, 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 I'm quite sure everybody do agree with it. Let's add to it, let's continue to work on it and uh, uh, let's move forward with it because that's a good thing that we can actually be a tangible thing that we can accomplish. Yeah. All right. Thank oh, you so no, much, Paula. Thanks. No problem. All right. Our next uh, agenda item is going to be a board membership outreach update. So uh, recently, you guys see me uh, send you an email regarding, uh, you know, membership of the board. And, you know, this whole thing is it all ties into each other in regarding to, you know, regards to bringing new members in who represent our community, we haven't tapped into everybody in CB11, you know? We have so many cultures, so many different backgrounds that, you know, are not a part of the community board. And that's something that is very ongoing that I think we're all starting to work on. I gave me an email from uh, the Bronxboro President's Office, Tom, had the new applications. Uh, I know this is an effort that we're gonna continue to work on. Um, and we're still tr striving to get new members. I know we all mentioned that we're gonna get a few, some people have some idea of some people that are interested in joining the community board. Um, what I think we're gonna do is to, to point out what, you know, to figure out where we're gonna focus on. I think we're gonna start outlining, I don't, I don't, Harry, I don't know if we can do this, but I wanna keep tabs of like, all the people we recommended to the board if possible. You have to realize that the elected officials have a certain amount of picks, so it's not up to us. It might be a good idea to keep it and talk to Jeremy. Yeah, I was okay. going to ask, how does that work? Because, like, 
is there a maximum of members? And I have no, I'm, I'm, I swear, I really don't know the answer. That's why I'm asking. Okay, the and city council has a certain amount of picks. The borough president has a certain amount of picks. The borough president can decide not to appoint someone that the elected official suggests. Mm. Yeah, I got a point and about all a board members president. have to have uh, have a maximum of fifty members. And no. from what I remember, no. like we're close, we're pretty close to that. There is no maximum. The maximum oh. is fifty, but it doesn't say it could be five members. There's no. There's nothing that says you have to have fifty. Right, right, right. No, no. Yeah, no. So I'm just saying there's, there's a, maximum, a maximum, not minimum, but there's a maximum. Right, I'm assuming. right, right. So and right now, how many have, members do we have? Harriet? We have forty. We have forty-eight. So now we there are two that could be put on the board, but I don't, I don't, I'm not sure exactly um, which elected official they're from. So depending yeah, upon I'll... which elected official it is, it is, depends on what his district is. Right. But we can check that with, with, um, recommend wisely. Right. That information right. is on the board website. I think Jeremy put up a page that shows for each board member, whether they were, they were a um, recommended by a city council person or if they were yeah. appointed directly by the borough president. Correct, David. I saw that. You're right. I saw that. You're absolutely right. Um, I, I was hey, in, I was oh, Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. Finish, finish what you were saying. No, I was appointed by the Bronx Borough President's office. I mean, I went through Richie Torres office, but I don't think they selected me. It was the Bronx Borough President. They just recommended me. But, um, yeah, that's a little complex. Um, we can look into that. I'm gonna ask Jerry more, Jeremy more about that, but I think it's still a good thing to educate the public about a community board and joining, if possible, uh, especially for communities that we're not representing. Demographic uh, page is very interesting because uh, things are changing uh, in the communities, and that's what the you know the census 2020 will should definitely show us a broader picture of people that we can, you know, you know, that could better represent our community for, you know, demographics that are changing in inside the community, if that makes sense. But Lisa, go ahead. No, I was just gonna point out the time um, and that we might need to table our agenda for the next meeting unless people want to go over. Oh, okay. So, um, you're saying, you're saying we should table this item. That's what you're saying? Well, no, I'm saying that like committee meetings are typically an hour and we're oh, almost yeah. at the hour mark. Yeah. Yeah. We're wrapping up soon. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, we I'm just have kidding. a lot of stuff on the agenda. So I didn't know if we need to make a motion to, no, to no. table the rest of the agenda for the next meeting. That's all. Jarrell, before you close, you should take a look at the chat. The, uh, someone is asking to speak to address the committee. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on top of it. Thank you okay. so much, David. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, yes, we could definitely table that item. This is something that's going to uh, be an ongoing situation. All right. Um, should we pass a motion for that or? Harriet? Um, you, you don't have to pass a motion for something that you're tabling, no. Yeah, we would just table it. All right. Moving forward, we're going to the board members' bios. I'm going to talk about this very quickly. Uh, we have 23, me 23 members that do not have a bio. Mm -hmm. I encourage I encourage bios, and I wanted to look into, you know, um, areas of, of where we can actually encourage members, because no one can be forced to do a bio, uh, but at least to give the, at least the community board office some type of description about themselves i think will be helpful even if they don't want it to be public public uh, i think that's something that we should definitely uh you know see how we can reach out to because jeremy sent me an email today where his uh his actual uh intern was actually looking into that and he reached out to several members and some members were unreachable or they didn't want to do it i think it's something that if it's coming from us our committee we can actually, you know, reach out to the members to see who we can get to do something like that. Anybody uh, interest, uh, interested in dealing with something like that? Well, why don't we get a list? Why don't we get the list of the committee members who don't have, uh, and then we can all select the ones we want to reach out to. Lisa, you have any uh, 
statements on that? Because it's 23 members that we, we that, that are, don't have any bios. I think this is a great idea, Darrell. This is a really cool point. Uh, it's important that the community sees who represents them on the board too, so. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, if there are members who maybe aren't comfortable writing a bio or feel like they don't have anything to put in a bio, um, if people are willing to volunteer to help with that, I know I can certainly help with that. Um, that might be helpful too, because it might be, there might be some people who are like, oh, I don't have anything to write in a bio. Like, what did I, you know, but everybody has something. So that could be part of the, the hesitation. Um, and then there are some people who just want to remain private and don't want to put that information up there. And obviously we can't force them, but, um, but yeah, if we want to like kind of divide and conquer the list, um, I'm certainly happy to help out with that. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do between now and next meeting, I'm gonna speak to Jeremy about it in the intern to see how we can divvy up a list and reach out to some members and to see if they're interested in doing it. We're not gonna force anybody to do anything because we can't, but we're gonna recommend and encourage the situation. So that's something I would like to do amongst us. All right. Um, any questions, any statements, anybody wanna say anything? All right, so the next item that I think we should, uh, we're going to is the public comments. Uh, before we dive into that, I just want to ask any member that's not a part of the community want to say anything. Okay, we're gonna to move to the public comment section. And the first person that's gonna speak is gonna be Roxanne Delgado. Go ahead, you have the floor. Yes, hello. It's not just the community. It's not just the community that doesn't seem to understand the community board function. It seems like many members on the community board doesn't don't really understand the function of a community board. Regardless, we um, the list. The BP has the list, which I have one dated two years ago of all the members who appointed them, and when their term expires, meaning they will have to be reappointed to the board for another two-year term. Also, you community board members do not represent us because we don't vote for you. Uh, our city council member and our state assembly, our center congressperson, they represent us because we voted for them to represent us on issues. Community board is run like a social club. It's just like what the 49 plus members just out of the blue decide what they want to address. This is why you don't have public engagement because community board should be concerning about how can we get, how can we listen and, and keep the public involved in this discussion, not about what one committee wants to do out of the blue. And the MTA, there's always, always a lawsuit against the MTA. They have to be ADA compliance, but due to uh, time and funding, it's going to take uh, at least 10 to 25 years in that report. This is why you have assessor right to address those areas where they do not have ADA compliance uh, train stations. But again, um, regarding the um, call-in option, I, I heard in the last meeting that the DM said that he didn't put the call-in option because technology, that's BS. He refused to put the call-in option on the emails. He refused to put it on the agenda. It took him almost six months before he did it. Also, um, the fact that when we call the office, no one picks up. Again, he said it's technology. You're telling me since March, he, can, he cannot figure out how to forward a call from the office to their resident where they're working at? This is Ricky. This is, think about how many SR requests Community Board 11 uh, resolves, barely one. This is what you should look at. Focus on inequality in within the community board, not inequality in the MPA, inequality in, in 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 the workplace. This is not your realm because there is agencies that address inequality in the MPA, inequality in the workplace. There's laws, in fact, there are federal laws that are addressing these issues. The city council, I mean, the community board needs to address with local community board issues, which you don't seem to be focused on. And regarding the inequality within your community board, I could say one thing. It was okay to make anti-Latino remark and people made fun of it. They told, they said, get over it. I can guarantee you if it's an anti-Semite remark, that person would be dismissed immediately. This is the inequality that we have to deal with, the disrespect. And this is why you don't have public attending your meetings. That's, you should look into that. Instead of focusing on, yes, of course we want young kids to engage, but look at why are the community not involved in the community board because you guys have walls. You only right, want Rose. to have the 49 minutes. Okay, bye. Thank bye. you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. 
Anybody in the uh, anybody else? All right. That closes the uh, public comment section of of the committee. Um, old business. There's a few items that we discussed that I think we should table because uh, we that we tabled that we don't want to expand this too far open right now because we want to focus on uh, the major items that we want to accomplish. And uh, top spoken languages in our district was one of the items, staff salaries and controllers audit, which is still ongoing. There's some of the items that we're going to uh, table for old business. All right. Um, any new business? Anything anybody want to uh, recommend? Nothing today. All right. I think um I think we have a lot of work cut out for us. We do. Um, we're we're constantly you know talking about other things that we can constantly continue to work on. We can consistently work on, and um and trying to make things better for every for the committee and uh, represent further record rec uh, um, representing our districts that we live in, that district we live in and. The other thing I wanted to say is that um, I'm glad that we're all working together and we all putting some ideas together because these are all tangible items that I know we can accomplish together. And, you know, I'm just happy about it, period. All right, so uh, with that, I'd like to put a motion out to adjourn tonight's meeting. Seconded. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. So that adjourns tonight's meeting. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Grail, meeting adjourned at 8.07 p.m. Appreciate every single one of you. Have a good night. And thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm ending the recording.